Hello, everybody, and welcome to On the Fly. I'm Jamison Coyle. Yes, the two best teams in the Eastern Conference faced off in a matinee clash at Madison Square Garden. The Rangers have picked up points in 13 of their last 14 games, despite missing some key pieces. Meanwhile, the Bruins are coming off a 5-2 loss to the Red Wings, but haven't suffered consecutive losses so far this season and have almost matched their incredible start from last year. It all points to a possible Eastern Conference final preview. Let's head to MSG for the highlights, as seen on NHL Network Showcase, presented by SAP. In 2022, we raised his number 30 to the Garden Rafters. And earlier this month, he took his rightful place in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Please welcome back first ballot Hall of Famer, Henrik Lundqvist. From Richmond, Virginia, Zach Jones. There's a shot and a goal! A quick turnaround! And it's Nick Bonino! And the Rangers jump out to the early lead! It's just a little quick chip play, but good job by Cooley, 50. Look at the fadeaway by Benino. And the fans loving it at the world's most famous arena. Shot through traffic. I got the city of Rose It's a power play goal for the Rangers, and they take a 2-0 lead. Oh, just a little wrister in. Almar gets a piece, but not enough. And you're right, it is Mr. Power Play Goal. Chris Kreider on the board to make it 2-0 Rangers. Throws it across, sliding defensive play by Gutsonson. Cuts it front. And the Bruins are on the board. What a sequence. Watch Trent Brennan behind the net. He draws triple coverage and still stays on the puck. Pops it out to Charlie Coyle, and he makes no mistake to cut the deficit to one. Throws it up high. One-time shot by Geeky, and he scores! Morgan Geeky on the one-timer. Blasts it past Jonathan Quick. And just like that, we got a tie game. Uh-oh. There's a long breakout pass for Kreider. He's in a the lead it's 3-2 Bruins keep it in here's Pasha walks in with a shot and he scores and we're tied and you think he's going high and it's just a little sweeper as he puts it underneath and through Jonathan Quick threats in five hole pasta is served that'll be coming on Boston Panera he looks he goes across shot there stop the front rebound back home by VC the Boston kid buries one against the Bruins and the Rangers Drops it to Zabanjad. There's a one timer, and Miller roofs it. Woo! What a shot! And the Rangers with a goal here late in period number two take a two goal lead. And Aaron back on the board today with an assist. And this one chance in front, and it's home, run home by Pitlick. Tyler Pitlick in front puts it up high, and the Rangers got half a dozen. It's 6 3. Here's another chance. Ben Reeves done. 
And you just said it. Don't count out the bees. And why would we? And they cut the lead back down to two at 6-4. Jones, there's a pass. That was, uh, that was something that was uh, back and forth and a lot of emotion probably from both teams invested into that game and really strong effort for us to stay with it and push through that and then forge through at the end against a really good hockey team. So tested you in a lot of different ways and I thought our guys answered the test really well. We knew this was going to be a battle and we knew it was going to take a full 60 minute effort and full 20, 20 guys. So um, I think... Uh, we did uh, everything, like I said, we needed to. And um, I think, uh, like I said earlier, I don't think we're playing our best hockey yet. Not willing to forward check, you know, not willing to work for offense. And then the breakdowns defensively are, you know, we're not giving our goaltenders an opportunity like we were before. Our habits and details have kind of eroded on us defensively here in the last year. So the Rangers just keep on rolling. With the win over the Bruins, the Rangers are now 13-1-1 in their last 15 games. Get this, New York averaging over three goals a game, own a 30.4 power play percentage, and have a penalty kill operating at 90% in that span. For more on this game, here's EJ Raddick and Kevin Weeks. Well, the New York Rangers just keep rolling along. They've got points now in 14 of their last 15 games. A little bit of a statement today against the Boston Bruins. They snapped the four-game losing streak against the Bruins. So they get a win over the Bees, and it was a complete effort. And I really was impressed with the depth players for the Rangers in this game. I mean, Nick Benino got his first goal as a Ranger. Tyler Pitlick got his first goal as a Ranger. Jimmy Vesey was involved with a goal and an assist. Seems like they were getting contributions from everywhere. They were, and really that's a testament to the balance that they have and the fact that they've been able to really emphasize, hey, we just can't win by stars and superstars alone. If we want to go deeper as a New York Rangers, the same aspiration for the Boston Bruins, we're going to have to lean on our support players as well. Support players really complementing the three-point effort of Chris Kreider, the two-point effort of Panarin, and the great goaltending of Jonathan Quick in this one. And think about it. The Rangers are without Filipino and yeah. Adam Fox. And as you mentioned, they didn't even play Shesterkin today, and yet they have a, a really impressive win. On the flip side for the Boston Bruins, I mean, it's back-to-back kind of stinkers for them. They lost at home to Detroit, now lose at the Garden to the Rangers. Uh, where do you see the Bruins right now? It has been a great start, but the last two, not so good. Yeah, it's all about detail for the Boston Bruins as well in their game, and that's kind of dissolved the last two games. Really, to your point, the game against the Detroit Red Wings yesterday, we saw that in this matinee game against the Rangers, we saw loose, a little disconnected defensively, maybe cheating on the side of offense uh, at the expense of defensive zone responsibilities. That's been the theme the last two games. The Boston Bruins are an elite club. They know it. But they have to get back and recommit themselves to the things that make them successful. Well, both teams will be action on Monday. The uh, New York Rangers will be continuing a three-game homestand take on the Buffalo Sabres. And the Bruins, they complete a two-game road trip. They'll be in Columbus to take on the Jackets. Andre Kopitar still playing some of the best hockey league. And he ties Marcel Dion, the most assists in franchise history, and hopefully he takes the lead here this afternoon. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about him anymore. All uh, these records he's broken this year. Honestly, it is tough to say anything more what Kopi means to this organization and this team. As the puck is hunted down, moving in. And a save and tie. There's a good look. Laferriere with a great chance. Tries to slip it over the right pad of Allen. And Allen with a terrific save. A chance here, though, for the Kings again for an early power play goal. To Fiala in the middle of give and go with Kopitar. Fiala centers. But Byfield couldn't get a stick on it. If it works, it's great. But the actual success rate of this type of play is relatively low. And here is Grunstrom off the draw. The wraparound right to the blue paint. Might have gone off a defender's stick. He knows he's going to wrap right from the get-go. Dubois fighting off a check, feeds it across to Black. Score! 91, Carl Grundstrom with his seventh. one nothing LA. He clocked this. That was right in his wheelhouse, Jimmy. He just hammered that puck. Great shot there by Grundstrom. So that'll do it for the opening 20. It's one nothing Los Angeles. Picked up by Caulfield. Some space. Caulfield. Slavkowski give it go. Off a king stick. Great job by Fiala. You come back to the fire goalpost, and that's exactly what he did with his stick leading the way. Good commitment by him to fill that lane. Montreal on the power play. A pass down low, centered across, oh. and Suzuki stopped by Copley. That's bang, the best bang, one. Play, yeah. Wow. Right to the post. He's done the work in practice, showing in a game. Regain, move in, left side, 
Sean Kaliev off a stick. Rev around Moore, and he scores! Moore thought it was in. So will it be Moore's goal? The referees are talking about it right now. It's in. Yeah. It is in. After reviewing the play, the first shot on that a fly is not going to the net. Therefore, we have a goal on the flyer shot. Gooley again, under some pressure here by the Kings. Big hit, Kaliev on Gooley. That's hard. And that's legal. Puck picked up by Suzuki. A pass to the net. Tipped and just wide. He was that close to get Montreal within one. 40 minutes in the book. And the LA Kings, a 2 nothing advantage. Canadians with Evans, Yelonen, and Pizzetta. A vice pressure, a steal, and a chance. Score! The Kings are forcing mistakes. They're attacking. And the will has been there for the Kings here in the third period. Does LaFerriere have enough in the tank? They'll hand it off. Moving in. Dubois chance. Save. And then Grunstrom tipped it wide with a gaping net staring him down. Deneau leads it. Give it go. Deneau back in. What a glove save. Jake Allen on Phil Deneau. That was some sweet passing, but a better stop from Jake Allen. Fiala weaving his way into the middle, hands it off, right side, in front of Collins, and he scores! Trevor Moore again! Boy, he's got magic hands around those nets. He placed it there more than anything else, but this is impressive by the Kings, the way they've approached this period. They do something they have never done on home ice. Shut out the Montreal Canadiens. The Kings keep rolling, 4 nothing. the final. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, everyone's big for us, and uh, right now we're playing a good team game, so uh, we'll just keep it rolling, and obviously we feed off the energy in here, so you guys keep bringing it, and we'll keep winning. A big part of it has been taking away passing lanes, so teams don't get those uh, backdoor looks and one-timer looks, and we've, we've done a great job with that, but kind of the heart and soul of our PK has been blocking shots all year, and you know, again, we did that again tonight, had some huge blocks from the guys, and you know, that, that obviously makes my job easier, but it takes away momentum from the other team, so it, uh, you know, and then it builds our momentum. So, you know, it's been huge for us. Trevor Moore picked up two goals in Los Angeles' shutout win over the Canadians to boost his season totals to 11 goals and 8 assists in just 19 games played. Last season, Moore had only 10 goals and 19 helpers through 59 games and was a negative 2 rating. He's already more than halfway to matching last year's point total. Still to come, the Devils need all the good news they can get. And on Saturday, New Jersey got their captain back. Did it translate to a win? Highlights are next. Welcome back to On the Fly. The Maple Leafs traveled to Pittsburgh for a matchup that always has a ton of star power. And this season, some extra intrigue. Saturday marked the first time the Leafs will go up against their former GM, Kyle Dubas, who was fired following Toronto's loss in the second round to the Panthers. Dubas, however, was quickly hired by the Penguins to be the team president and took on the GM role as well. And this game is also big for the Pens, who needed a win after losing four of the last five games. It was June 1st that Kyle Dubas was hired as the president of hockey operations and subsequently named himself the GM here in Pittsburgh. This date, November 25th, was probably circled as the Maple Leafs come to town. It's Austin Matthews' 500th career game. His 313 goals the most by any active player in the league through 500. Tavares wins the draw. Nylander spins it to Riley. Centered off. Scores! Tyler Bertuzzi on the rebound. And the Leafs strike first. And watch for Tuzzi. He gets behind two Penguins. And that's a play there where Carlson gets watching the puck instead of trying to box out. He's got to be in a position to take. O'Connor picks it up, banks it ahead through center. Crosby over the line, looking for help. He's got O'Connor. Down low, gets it. Tucks it in. Tick, tack, toe. 1-1. Two does a great job of just taking that second, Josh. Calming down. Selling shot and waiting for Jake Gensel to open up in the back door. And man, you gotta love those slam dunks. That failed to click and the Leafs will counter with numbers. Four on two. Nice across. Marner lane. Fire rebound. Scores. Matthew Nice. And the Leafs have their second lead of the night. Boy, the pace 
of this game has just been end-to-end -end action. You get a good chance at one, you better not be hanging around. Good play here by Nyes. Curled it around the stick of Pedersen, and this is one of those shot passes. Boy, what an entertaining start to this game as we sit at 2-1. to one. Matthews after it, he finds Marner. Tries to connect to Nyes, he does. Looking for help, Matthew Nyes opens up, save Jari, rebound, he got that! Tristan Jari, great stop on Marner! Oh, two on one again, the pass off the pad. And Tristan Jari, just a great reflex lead. He just flinches the right shoulder to keep it two on lead. Uh, Jari dumps it deep. Yeah, four game, four nice, and that and the other was had a considerable hop. Here's a Jari off the turnover, wrist shot, score! Simple, 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 and hit the net, baby. Short side shelfy. What a shot by Noel Achari. Another face-off win. Carlson lets it rip. Score! The Penguins go in front for the first time tonight. I know you felt it coming. I felt it coming, too. The face-off win is the set play. Penguins use this play all the time, where they switch the defenseman up to open up for the one-timer. Nylander takes off. He's got Riley with him. And Nyes across Nyes. And he missed the target. Thought a great setup by Nylander. And the puck ends up out of play. Nyes just tries to corral it and get the quick release. Here come the Leafs. It's Matthews around with 10. Wraps behind the net. Save made by Jari. He robs Nylander. Tristan Jari just battling. It's getting ugly down there. One last charge for the Leafs. It's Nyes. Dumps it deep. Jari's going to handle it. This game is over. A two-point party on Fifth Avenue and a little extra sweep. Have an opportunity here tonight uh, against a really good team, a really dangerous team. Um, I thought we uh, responded really well, and that was, uh, that was a good hockey game. Both teams had some good looks, and uh, both goalies were solid, so good to get that one. I was really proud of our guys, you know, just uh, after coming off a disappointing loss last night, just with the resilience and, you know, and just staying with it in tonight through the whole 60 minutes. They pushed uh, in the third period to try to get uh, the tying goal, and uh, I, th I thought we did a real good job just defending hard. Well, I think today we... Uh... We didn't start as well as we wanted to, but we stuck with it. And uh, I think once we got the 3-2 lead, I think the third, uh, we played a more composed game, and uh, we definitely learned our lesson from yesterday. Eric Carlson tallied the game winner on Saturday against the Leafs. Since the start of the 2014-15 season, Carlson has recorded 33 points in 25 games against Toronto. The Silky Swede was the prized acquisition of Penn's president, Kyle Dubas, this past offseason. Dubas, of course, joining the Pens after being relieved of his duties as GM of the Leafs. Up next, the Sabres and the Devils in Newark. Nico Heischer back for the first time in more than four weeks. His 200-foot game has been sorely missed, and his leadership, there's no doubt about that, we know. And Devils have lost three in a row and six of seven, but with a win tonight, could jumpstart a boost back up in the standings. Alex Hawks wins it! the back of the net that we talked about bill hopes goes through top shelf to give the devils a one nothing lead jack hughes back pedaling he shoots Cobra kicks rebounds he scores tyler to foley puts it in two nothing devils to foley finds that loose puck after the initial shot from jack hughes up top and puts it in the back of the net wide open net on the backhand devils take a two nothing lead for foley's 10th of the season Brad feeds foley in his first game back in 29 days. Scores his third goal of the year. What a start for the Devils. Three goals here in the first period. Needless to say, this has been the best first period all year. Here comes Brown off a turnover, finds the trailer. Pull up, Andre Pollock makes it four in the first. Well, Andre Pollock started to fight. 
news for the Devils. And it's a beautiful pass from Jesper Bratt on the backhand right to Palat. He goes upstairs. Yes, there was a goaltender change. Devin Levi in the net. So the Sabres going to the power play here. 0 for 2 versus New Jersey on the season. They have 3 for their last 10. Short-handed McLeod with a shot and a save by Levi. Glove save by Devin Levi. And a tap to Rasmus Dahlin. Santa gotcha. Yeah, made it look really easy there. He just held his ground. In too tight on the defensive coverage. Now Alex Tuck in front for Skinner. Scores! On the power play, Jeff Skinner gets the Sabres on the board. It's 4-1 New Jersey. 1807 remains in the second period. Well, Jeff Skinner's going to collect his 10th goal of the year, and it was great puck movement here by this power play. Vanacek, he puts it in just inside the post. That's a big goal. Hughes drops it back to his brother. Hawks shoot, save Levi. Rebound, score! To Foley's second, and a quick response. Again, Tyler to Foley. Picks up a rebound. He's always in the right position and pokes it past. This is some good work as well by the Devils as they pass that puck around. All five goals have come five on five for the Devils. It is 5-1 New Jersey heading to the third period as the Devils try to continue those two dominant first periods. Hamilton shot to the front, deflected, score! Dawson Mercer got a piece of it, net front, and the Devils lead 6-1. Everything going right here. The favors going to the power play here. To the far circle, Benson up high in the slot. There's a shot, scores! Kyle Pozo, I think, deflects that one in after the shot for the point by Power. Sabres second goal of the night, another power play goal. They trail 6-2. to two. First power play tonight for New Jersey. Remember, they scored with the extra attacker on a delayed penalty. Hughes shoots, scores! Luke Hughes puts it in, and the Devils are back up five. That's a tremendous move and shot by young Luke Hughes there. Having Nico back is, is huge for our club, and uh, it obviously gave us a little bit of a jump, or a big jump, and uh, it, it speaks volumes of what Nico means to this team. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely great to be back. It took longer than I wanted, and uh, I'm happy to be back out there with the boys battling uh, for wins, and uh, it's, it's a good step in the right direction. A good win tonight with a great crowd tonight. Team effort, uh, I think it was from the beginning a team effort. That's uh, how you win games, and I uh, love these guys, so. Saturday was a much-needed win for this Devils group, who added Nico Heischer back to the lineup the first time since October 27th when Heischer suffered that upper body injury against the same Sabres team. Heischer notched a goal and an assist in his return as part of a season-high seven goals scored for New Jersey. We stay in the Metro Division for the Flyers and the Islanders. On Wednesday, Cal Clutterbuck became the 382nd skater in NHL history to play 1,000 games. Islanders celebrating Cal Clutterbuck's accomplishment here today. Let's see if the Islanders can hold on to this and keep playing that way. That shot got through. Sorokin couldn't see it. The rebound was underneath him. It squirts free. Now he gets the whistle. I don't think he ever saw it, but he was in the right spot at the right time. I don't know how it didn't hit Matt Barzell. You'll see this. It almost comes right through him, and that's the hardest thing for a goaltender, and you move at the last minute. I think Barzi was trying to get a piece of it himself. Set Sam Bolduc up with it. Bolduc twisted down to the ice by Noah Cates. It's Cates bringing it around. Throw to the front. Tapped on goal. And a save from Sorokin. Bolduc had good control, and then once he took it to his back end, he put himself in a tough position. He needed to move that a little sooner, bounce it off the glass. At least you keep the puck in front of you. Daniel takes a look both ways, plays it up, but Down is ready for that center and in front. Sanheim breaks it up. He's clear, though, goes right to Dobson for a shot blocked by Tippett, and a great play ahead, but just out of the reach of Lawton. They got a real athletic play right here from his knees. Oh, man, that would have been something else. Forster returns it to Konechny. This pass gets through for Ristolainen. and shot is stopped by Sorokin. It tipped off the stick of Anders Lee out high. Gets his head up, says, I just want to get it through. Good, smart play, and easy save for Sorokin when he can see it. And then Frost on the deflection. Good save there by, by Sorokin. Swept that by Dobson, picked up by the Islanders. Little feather pass. In tight by Sam Harrison. Couple of huge saves from Harrison here in the middle stages of period number yeah, two. And a little bit of style points too for Harrison. All the way around out the other side. And he'll get it to the point, Pulley. The power play is over. Pulley centers it and Harrison.
Erickson slides across to make the save. A real good read by Erickson. You can see his depth. He's back in his blue paint, which is, allows him to read the play a little longer, gets across on time, and makes a real good save. And the Islanders win the draw, move it this way. Dobson shot, oh, save, Erickson. And it goes into the safety netting. Wow. You talk about timely. This game will go to overtime. Romano to Nelson. Nelson had it stripped. Konechny back to his feet, charging in, and it's the rookie with a game saver. Wow, aggressive save there by Price Wilson. Picked up by Atkinson. Cam Atkinson in time and a kick save by Sorokin. The left pad of Sorokin keeps the game alive. Scoreless through overtime. Shootout. So Tyson Forrester, chance to win the game. He's been all over all night long. He does! Forrester scores and the Flyers win the hockey game. He deserves that. Tyson Forrester, persistence paying off. He had all those shots during play. Wins it in the shootout. one nothing. your final as the Flyers finally Win on Long Island. And the Flyers walk away happy. Terrific game by Sam Harrison. What a win for the Flyers. Hey, Sam, congratulations on the win. Let's talk about the game, first of all. Uh, kind of a tricky game for a goaltender. You'd, you'd have flurries around you and then not much happening at all. Uh, are those games difficult in terms of keeping your focus? Yeah, a little bit, but uh, I mean, uh, it's positive. The guys are keeping uh, keeping the shots down in front of me, so uh, I just got to do my job as well and step up when uh, when needed. Sam, let's rewind. The first two starts of the season, you give up 12 goals in the first two starts, right? And now uh, you, you play a role in this game where you know you shut the door and allow the team to win in a shootout. What does this game do for your confidence and and uh, and how you feel you can contribute to this club? I mean, I, I feel after those uh, those games there, I obviously uh, didn't feel great. Uh, I want to help this uh, team win uh, win games, and I gotta uh, do my job. But I think I I've played better and better and gained more confidence as uh, uh, as the game has gone on. So for me, it's just uh, keep on building here and uh, um, get ready for uh, whenever my next start is. Extra time is not the Islanders' time. Their shootout loss to the Flyers on Saturday marks their sixth game this season that they've dropped in overtime or the shootout, most such losses in the NHL. And a big reason for their woes in the extra time is their scoring issues. New York's 2.55 goals per game ranks bottom five in the NHL. Coming up, the Golden Knights return home from a long road trip to take on the Coyotes. And home ice has been kind to Vegas this season. Would it continue on Saturday nights? Into the corner, Kesselring, nice little poke away there. Played to the front, and a chance, marches so, and he's robbed by goaltender Connor Ingram. Great chance early on as Eichel just slips by, takes this puck deep down behind, low the goal line, support from Barbashev, and he finds Marcia so with a great chance all alone. And but Marshall just couldn't elevate that puck as a left pad saved by Ingram. Now Michael Kesselring in his 14th game tonight. Krause puts it on net. Save Thompson. And he stopped the rebound. Real good chance on the follow up from Michelli. Puck loose. Rush shot of Bukestad. I think Thompson may have got a piece of that one too. Best pressure of the night for Arizona. Keegan Colasar in the Vegas penalty box and the Coyotes go to the power play. Jersey lost the puck. Michael trying to charge by him. Put it on net one-handed, but he got held in the process. There's Eichel. Look at the speed and then the power as he gets by. Jersey does a good job. I think it's just at the end there. He may have been a little extra hold. The power play for the Coyotes is over just like that. Cotter pinching in. Springs it free to Amadio. Drop pass to Carlson. Shot blocked by Cooley. Haig looking. Feeds it down low. Center pass. And Cotter couldn't bury it. As he was set up by Amadio. Here, here's the chance. Carlson fanned on that shot. They're going to get the puck back. Amadio's going to little play to Connor and get swatted away in front. It's Logan Cooley who makes the defensive play. Turn the other way, and here they come. Right back in. Amadio's got a step. He shoots a stop and a rebound. Oh, and defended very well by Sean Dersey. And he tries to take it in behind, and then Josh Brown is on him to the front. And they can't finish it off. And here's. More pressure. Amadio is in good in his career against the Coyotes. And then Carlson 
Looking for goal number 10. Big save, Connor Ingram. He's been so good. The Golden Knights will indeed get a power play. As Troy sets to the penalty box for delay a game. Right back to the first. Oh, save. Oh, Petrangelo robbed by Connor Ingram. Look what I found. Connor Ingram's best save of the hockey game right there. He's looking up at the Jumbotron, you betcha. Stetcher across to Dersey. A little give and go. Dersey a wrist shot, save Thompson. Dersey and Michelli work a little give and go, and Thompson the stop on Dersey. Zucker down low, feeds it in front. Kerfoot put it towards the net, save Thompson. Logan Thompson able to turn away, Alex Kerfoot. Awkward into the end boards, didn't look good. In front, they score! And Clayton Keller is given the Coyotes a 1-0 lead. Oh, what a goal. And again, that fourth line, they provided energy. They kept the play alive, and then you roll your top unit out. This is all Logan Cooley. There's three Vegas Golden Knights, and Cooley comes out with the puck, and he finds Schmaltz in the slot, who finds Clinton Keller back door. Back out high, Petrangelo shoots, and a glove save, Connor Ingram. Connor Ingram makes that look so easy. I mean, he's been the story here tonight, outshot 26 to 15. Connor Ingram is... It's a big time stop. Empty net down to our right. Knocked out of there. Michelli skates it back. Michelli to the front. And a goal. Lawson Kraus make it 10 on the season. And a dagger for the Coyotes. 2-0 they lead it late. That was the sound. You guys snap a three-game losing streak on the road against the defending Stanley Cup champs. And you pitched a shutout. Are you all right with that? Yeah, I think it's... Uh... You know, it's a good response. Um, we had some some long meetings there in the past couple of days, just trying to get things back on track. So I think that was a, a great response from everybody. So that's a that's a good one to to learn from and build on. Tyson was just talking about the total commitment. We just saw the stats, and one of those uh, that flashed up was the block shot, 17 as a team in front of you. What was your sense of just how tight everybody was playing in front and that commitment? Yeah, I think that's what it takes in this league is you're going to need a group effort from it. So um, everybody did a great job in front of me. Even at the end of the game there, we go up 2 nothing and got to kill a penalty with 13 seconds left. Guys are still putting their body on the line. So I think that tells a lot about the kind of guys you have inside that room and, and just the commitment that they show day in, day out at all times. So it's, uh, it's big. After opening the season going 11-0-1 in the first 12 games, the Golden Knights have now hit a bump in the road. Following Saturday's shutout loss to the Coyotes, Vegas has dropped six of their last nine matches, scoring almost two goals per game less than the rate they started the season at in those first 12 contests. Coming up next, it's the Flames and the Avalanche. What a beautiful touch as tonight's top performers, Cohen and Willis Snow, the ceremonial puck drop before the game with the Avalanche donating $10,000 to ALS Research. And not to forget Chris's wife, Kelsey, who created much needed awareness by chronicling Chris's battle with ALS. The awareness continues here at Ball Arena tonight, part of the legacy of Chris Snow. This should be a goalie interference penalty as Prosvitov was run over. Well, the whole reason this play was called is because of Val Nachushkin. We talked about his offense. Look at Val, the left side of your screen. Look at him pumping the legs. So Val Nachushkin is 100% of the reason. One, Flames probably didn't score. And two, Flames took a penalty. And he has now on the power play. So Val, just when we thought he couldn't get any better. Flipped up top. Here's Drew to the slot. Shoots it. And it's a power play goal, and the Avs have the one nothing lead. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is 27 getting hot? <laughs> I love it. Couldn't pick it up all the way to the points. The door off throws it right off Johansson. Here comes Ryan Johansson. He'll race in after a loose puck. And an opportunity on the referee. He scores. Ryan Johansson. Hardworking. Lance Sherman all the way around the cage to deliver the goods. And the Avs have a 2 nothing lead for Johansson, his seventh of the season, and you felt that one was coming. It happens your star players set the tone as well, right? Like, yeah, everybody else kind of falls. Here's a chance in front. Nice pass. He's going to score. Terrific setup by Huberto as he feeds it over to Backlund. And Backlund cuts the lead to one. Huberto now with 13 points on the season, and this is 20th game. And so the Flames have now made things interesting. Here comes McKinnon surveying. Sends it down deep. First 
first goal in his last eight games. The Avs are on top. Three to one for McKinnon, his seventh of the year. He's as stunned as anybody. Brings it in to the forehand. Couldn't pull the trigger. Wrapped up to the point. Manson with a wrist shot. Deflected. Give it a shot. Blocked away. Loose puck and it's underneath the door. Oh my goodness. Ross Colton had a wide open net. And I think it went off Anderson and then underneath his goaltender. Long bomb off the inboard. Backhanded shot. Saved by Vladar. He'll jump on top. Oh my goodness. And now Wood is tackled down. All kinds of anger in the Cavalry zone. Miles Wood is absolutely steaming mad. Oh, he's a Tasmania devil down there. One more time for Kadri. Kadri in front. Deflected rebound. They can't cut it in. Cross the top. Able to make the save as the puck sat for a moment with a wide open net. How did that not go in? I mean, the Flames have had plenty of chances. They hit a crossbar as well. But the Avs built that two-goal lead out to two, and they're just trying to nurse this one home to the finish line. Crowded ball arena. Rising to their feet as Miko brings it ahead. Two to go. Shot saved. Ladar, he'll drop it down, and that will do it. The Colorado Avalanche have defeated the Calgary Flames 3-1 to one and have taken over first place in the Central Division. What a great game by the Avs. Nathan, six wins in your last seven, uh, so the Avalanche are rolling. But let's start with how your team withstood a lot of pressure from the Flames in the third period tonight. Yeah, we, we didn't play great in the second uh, 30 minutes of that game. Uh, probably played great. We made some big saves. Uh, you know, they didn't do much either, I didn't think. I, I just thought both teams are pretty bad. On pace for a second straight 100-point season. I'd be interested, though, in your assessment of your own play for the first quarter of the year. Solid, yeah. Been good. Uh, Bedsy. Obviously, we talk a lot, and um, yeah, he says uh, obviously uh, things are you know he he loves analytics, so you know he he said things are uh, good and uh, produ creating a ton, and um, just got to keep going. Another night, another record being broken by Kale McCarr. McCarr picking up an assist in the Abs 3-1 win over the Flames and reached the 30-point mark in just his 20th game. He became the fastest defenseman to record 30 points in a season in Avalanche Nordiques franchise history, besting Jeff Brown's record set 1988-89. The Canucks have enjoyed playing the Sharks this season. Two games, 13 goals, two wins. Could Vancouver make it three wins on the season? Highlights are next. The NHL Network Showcase presented by SAP returns on Sunday as the Blues and Blackhawks face off at 2 p.m. Eastern time from Chicago. Jamie Hirsch and Kevin Weeks are on the call. Now let's get back to the highlights with the Canucks and Sharks. The Sharks now at 3:15 and 2 against a Vancouver team that's 14, 6 and 1. Game remains scoreless. Hoffman celebrated his birthday with a goal last night and they score! Tom! with his first National Hockey League goal. What a thrill. His first in the league. The first goal for the Sharks is the first goal for Emerson. Terrific job by the game. Canucks on the power play, their first one in this game. Yeah, their last power play goal was in Calgary. That was off Pedersen's stick. That was also his last goal. Goal for 10, the last four games. JT Miller, Philip Horonic, one-timer. He scores. Kakinen thought he had it for a moment, but Horonic on the one-timer scores on the power play, and the Canucks have tied the game in one. Horonic has his second of the season, and Quinn Hughes with an assist extends his point streak to 11 games. He's tied the club record for defensemen for 1-1 as we start the second period. Canucks with that long streak of success against the Sharks, 11 straight wins. There's a goal! Fabian Zetterlin, and it's 2-1 Sharks! Fabian Zetterlin ties Mike Hoffman for the 
team goal scoring lead. That's his fifth of the year, and the Sharks have their second lead. The Canucks can't get their power play to work here, tail end of the second period. Opportunity here with just over a minute remaining in the second period to get back on even terms. Quinn Hughes from home shoots, loose puck, Besser scores. Got that one to go after all these chances the last two nights. And Brock Besser able to sweep it in on the rebound and tie the game at two. It's his 14th goal, Canucks tie the score. Four on four, a 2-2 two -two game. The Sharks have had the lead twice. Here's Granlin, in alone, he scores! What a goal by me, Kyle Granlin! His first as a Shark, and it's a beauty! Right there, he attacks the middle, takes it right to the hole, puts it in, what a big lift for the Sharks. And the Sharks now will go on the power play, four on three. Eklund looking for a passing lane, not there, goes back up top. Addison, the touch pass, Granlin to the net, and they score! Week. That's six goals in the last six games, and the Sharks have a 4-2 lead here in the third. Touch lap for to be went wide. Big hit thrown down low, and then a response. And now we've got more than a scrum. Everybody in there. And this one's got a nasty edge to it now, as the officials contend with some hot tempers still out of the faceoff area. Pedersen hit the San Jose player, and then Benning came clear across the ice and nailed Pedersen in the back. It's a mess. Well, that was a dog pile in the San Jose zone. After the retaliatory hit by Benning on Pedersen, Canucks with the net empty. Six attackers, just over three minutes remaining. Miller brings the fucking block. Rebound, Besser scores. Brock Besser with his second goal of the game. With six attackers on the ice, and with 3-11 remaining, the Canucks are back within one. Fifteen goals on the season. Besser tied for the league lead now with Nikita Kucherov. Perlick again. He'll blast one into traffic. Loose to Miller, and he shot it over the net and out of play. And J.T. Miller, he had the tying goal on his stick. Last chance time here for the Canucks. Shot, blocked, rebound, Romick blocked by Benning. Hurdle's got the puck, and the Sharks hang on and win. Their best performance this year, it's not even close. Kapo Kakinen with a 32 save gem, and the Sharks take down Vancouver. Tied at two after 40 minutes of play. How sure were you going into the third period that you could beat this Vancouver team? I think we we played a good game throughout the whole 60 minutes. So, uh, I mean, obviously it was a good uh, start of the third period for us, but uh, it was a good effort the whole 60 minutes, and um, uh, let's just keep doing that. Mikhail, congratulations on a great game. Enjoy the night. See you Monday. Thank you. The Sharks snapped their three-game losing skid by defeating the Canucks to earn their fourth win of the season. San Jose is now 4-1-1 in their last six games on home ice, averaging over three goals a game with a power play running at over 28% in that span. Time for the top shelf plays of Saturday. have had the lead twice. Here's Granlin. In alone. He scores! What a goal by me, Kyle Granlin! Here's Achari off the turnover. Wrist shot scores! No, Achari goes upstairs. He got a cookie. Short side shelfie. What a shot. He'll race in after a loose puck. And an opportunity on the referee. He scores! Chance to win the game. It's been all over it all night long. He does! Forster scores, and the Flyers win the hockey game. Dyson Forster wins it in the shootout. Welcome back to On the Fly. Let's check out the best saves from the last week in the NHL. Been able to do the split. Oh, man. That's the toenail save. Still got it. In front for Larson, Demko diving out to sprawl forward to make the save and keep it a one goal game. Larson, Ian Larson. There's Larson. What a save by Demko. Sensational stop by Thatcher Demko. Into a 
his net. Here comes Theodore with Marcheseau. Theodore, Marcheseau shoots. What a stop! In the late stages, Primo never say time. Gets it cross and a big save. What a pass to Marcheseau and a better save by Primo. Pack it inside. They get it down low. Cross ice pass. What a, what a save by Gibson. Great stop moments ago by John Gibson on Verona. No way the goalie is going to be able to get across. Gibson able to do it with the right leg. Sneaky shot put out, rebound, and that's hammered over the net by Smith. Did Shea get a piece of that on that gaping cage? Skating ability required, and then desperation going stick on puck. You won't see a much better play than this. So he's matched that total up to seven points. We are Karam! Oh, what a stop! Unbelievable! It's Dvorak robbed by Aiden Hill. Christian Dvorak's trying to figure out how that puck did not go in the net. Unreal from Eden Hill to recover. Monahan zips it out high. Matheson looking back. Door! And Hill made the stop on Suzuki! And the Golden Knights hang on and pull it out in Montreal. There's the play behind the net to Suzuki and the left arm of Aiden Hill as he comes across. Wow into the slot, redirected, and then the shot! Oh! Dreisaitl with a chance, but Rowski came over! Bounce puck and turnaround pass. There's Dreisaitl, and wow! Sergei Bobrovsky gets the arm on it. Look how he tacks! Through now, Ryan Pollock has a chance. Sends one across. Dip to the right pad! What a save off Wallstrom, who then put the rebound off the outside of the post. But Demko with some early thievery to keep this game scoreless. Get that first regulation loss. And oh, what a save by Demko. He atones for his own error. He got caught behind the net. Fired on goal by Palmieri, and Demko came scrambling back to make a marvelous save. Oh, behind the defense, in, glove save, and then a pass save on the rebound by Stolar. Oh, my. Anthony Stolar's desperation lunge with that left pad. Ryan Strom's in alone. Good stop on the initial save. Better one on the rebound. Watch him lunge with that left toe and just get a little piece of it. Robertson back across the run. He works in a backhand shot. Oh, oh stop oh. by Fleury. Mark Andre Fleury sprawls and makes the stop. Oh, oh man. That's the toenail save. Mark Andre Fleury still got it. Is Carolina trying to change the score right now? Out in front to Ajo, oh, second chance, Jari just robs him. Save Jari, not once but twice. Ridiculous stops from Tristan Jari. Oh, are you kidding me? There's the first one and the second one, boom. And then that stretch save. After getting dinged up there in the second turnover here atop the crease, and Jarvis' shot would not go. Tristan Jari, did you stop it? What? Looked like he did stop it. And never give up, said Tristan Jari, as he reached back with the paddle. And right there, gets a piece of it, gets a lot of it. Wow, what a save by Jari. Time for the three stars of the night. Our third star of the night, Nico Heischer, who recorded a goal and an assist in the Devils' 7-2 win over the Sabres. It was Heischer's first multi-point performance of the season. Our second star is Samuel Erson, who earned his second career shutout in the Flyers' 1-0 shootout win over the Islanders. Erson stopped all 25 shots he faced to get the victory. And our first star of the night is Chris Kreider, who recorded two goals and an assist in the Rangers' 7-4 win over the Bruins. It was his second three-point outing of the season. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of On the Fly. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jameson Coyle. We leave you now with the best from Saturday. Please welcome back first ballot Hall of Famer, Henrik Lundqvist. Bandit Chandler Miller. What a close save. Jake Allen on Phil Tano. Please join us in congratulating Cal Clutterbuck. Wish shot scores.